All right, this video goes out to Kat Masterson, and I filmed a video for her uh, just a few moments ago, and it was to do with the way you do joins, right? So if I look in this picture here, I can see that this is the new Tableau 2020 version, where instead of joins being the default way to connect data, it's blends, right? So I covered that. So if you're getting that issue where, you know, you can't see the Venn diagram or the, the menus look different, check out that video. It's most likely that. I also updated the Udemy course to have a video to cover that. But then she goes on to say that it's, her question is, um, thanks for responding, referring to the lesson where you purposely performed a join incorrectly, but I'm unclear as to why it was incorrect. Okay, so I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna show you why. For me, when I look at, when I think of data, I just think of it like a car park, you know, where cars, like, you can only have one car facing another car. You can't have two in the same spot. It just doesn't fit. Yeah, so I think of it geometrically that they physically <laughs> have to go in slots, you know. So let me show you how I, uh, how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens if you do a join incorrectly, right? And then what happens if you do it correctly and how new data actually generates, all right? In this example, we've got a a one to one, right, um, relationship. And why is it one to one? Well, because there's no duplicates, okay, in terms of these two fields. There's no combination of furniture and central that exists twice, right? It's all unique, unique combinations. Looking at them independently, yes, they're duplicates, and yes, there are duplicates. But when you're doing joins depending on how many fields you're joining together dictates if they're unique or not okay so how i like to think about it is if you just join these as a word right just to visualize this okay if i do that right is there anything here that is a duplicate and the answer is no that's how I see it when it comes to joins. Now, it doesn't matter how many fields I'm joining. I could be joining two or four or five. If I concatenate or if I combine every single one of those things, if nothing repeats along those fields, then I know it's a unique relationship. However, if I do this one to this one, then it's no longer a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a many-to-many -many because you have many duplicates, right? I don't know if that's the real word, but many of the same Field. So this will generate more data. So let me show you what happens. Let's say I wanted to do, <clears throat> I've got two spreadsheets, right? This one and this one. And I want to transfer these values into here. Now, why wouldn't I just copy and paste? Well, firstly, let's say instead of 10 rows, you had 10,000, you know? So copying and pasting isn't, isn't an option when data starts to get larger. You start needing to use lookups and joins and indexes and all that. So what we want to do is we want to do a join to bring this data over here, but we want it to fit perfectly. So if I add all this up, the final result on both sides should be 644. And if they're equal, it means I haven't created any new information, right? Which means the transfer is perfect, okay? So how do I do that? Well, let's do it incorrectly. Let's say I'm only looking at furniture. That means in the property of a join, it's going to do this combination. If you look at the first one, it's going to connect to everything that also says furniture in a single join, right? So it's going to do this to this to this, right? So that's three data sets already. If we do it again for the second one, one, two, three, right? So it's going to create another three data sets. Now do it for the last one, one, two, and three, so we've got another three. So it actually created nine data sets. Physically in my mind, what does this look like? Well, if I move this down to, and I move this down to, right? And then this down to, right? It's gonna do this, right? And then this is going to repeat. Right, because it's it's trying to match everything that matches, right? Which is furniture to furniture. Not what well, I'm not I don't care about region. It's almost like region doesn't exist. Okay. If I'm only doing a single join when actually I should be doing a double. So now if I do the same thing for the rest of them, it's easily gonna be greater than six hundred forty four because I've oops, hang on. 
because I've duplicated this data because I was not clear that I should also consider region right so what happens if I do a double join all right let's get rid of this well then what happens is both fields must match so if I go furniture and central right then it can only really go here because furniture and north is not the same so I can go like that right and then the next one and then the next one okay so if I do that for all of them where both need to match then I don't create any new data all right um, and that's basically the general idea of creating it so what I tend to do right um, and this doesn't it doesn't matter how experienced you are, how how long you've been in the game, or how long you've been doing joins or SQL or anything like that. One of the things you really need to do when you're doing joins of any kind is have some sort of quality check, right? And it can be as simple as well. The number should be 644. That therefore, if I do some sort of join or whatever operation I do, I should get 644. Done. If it comes out higher or lower, then you know something has happened. Right, something is wrong. Now the thing is, um, the reason this is so important is because it doesn't take a lot for things to go wrong. So 644 on this side can be 643, right? It's if it's almost imperceptible. I think that's a word that when you do a report or a visualization, you won't see this missing one. That's why you need to do these checks when you do joins, right? So what I do is let's say I think I have one here where I'm doing a join. After I've done the join, one of the first things I do is I'll go into some sort of count. All right, let's say I'm going to count the order IDs. Whatever that number is, that's what I was expecting to see ahead of time, right? Because I already know what it should be. If this is higher or lower, then I'm screwed. What, a lot, what I see a lot of people do is they do the join and then they get straight into visualizing. Now, if you're doing something like, you know, I'm just going to do an example. Let's just count you know, the number of manufacturers, right? And you get straight into doing this. You are not going to see one value missing. It, you just can't, right? That's just not how it works. So you really have to do those um, checks in between, right? So I hope that explains how the duplicates work on a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, the idea kind of extends into many-to-many -many relationships as well. But obviously, because you have many-to-many, many-to-many will automatically create new data. Um, which is probably intentional because it's many to many, right? Um, it depends of it depends on whether that's the behavior you want because sometimes duplicates is what we want. Sometimes it is the behavior we want. So doing those calculations, you know, pen on paper, understanding what goes in, what comes out, um, is really what you need to make sure that the behavior you're aiming for is what you get. All right. So I'll leave it at that. I could kind of talk all day about this stuff because I love it. So let me know if that's confusing or anything else you want me to cover or more examples. And I'm happy to film some more videos. So hope you enjoyed and see you next time.